Hey guys, so Animate Guardian of Smiting, is it viable? And I would say yes, and you don't need mega budget. This is kind of um, on a lower budget. I would say this is a low budget. The Animate Guardian itself is carrying around 5 divines of items. It could be a lot lower. And also if you are willing to compromise a bit, the player's items are also not expensive really. Although I guess it depends on the market. So this build is actually not very high damage and as a player I don't really have much tankiness but I did manage to go through tier 17 map. I guess for most builds you do really need to roll the modifiers until you get something that you can do. Like you, you wouldn't really want to run something crazy that you couldn't do. So. I would say with this build you probably want to avoid anything that has the Sable region. So I think Maven has that, Cirrus may have that and some monsters in uh, tier 17s also have that. So I did notice my animate garden once uh, beginning to almost die but uh, that was in tier 17 map and only once. Uh, other than that my animate garden is like I wouldn't say that it's very tanky it has like around 30,000 life which isn't much but it does have over I believe 10,000 life region per second. And this is animate garden of smiting so it does use a smite like a transfigured smite that does not have a smite uh, flat damage buff but it does strike multiple targets. So it clears pretty well but I also gave it uh, Impulsa for extra clear speed. And by the way all the items and all the small notes, if you look at the path of building import code I, I did leave some notes uh, about like smaller things like Spectres, how to mana sustain and animate garden items. But yeah the damage isn't very high and uh, this is with the Soul Ascension gloves so it does ramp up the damage against rare and uniques. And uh, with just like 10 souls you would be getting 50% increased attack speed for your animate guardian. And I am only using 3 specters and they are only for utility. However the damage in POB this is against enemies on low life because I am using punishment course. But this is not min max I am lacking some quality on some of the support gems and you can definitely squeeze out a lot more damage out of this and I think you could even go with a different weapon I am using tripanon weapon because uh, it just gives me a 100% crit chance and then I use destructive link to transfer that crit chance to minions so I do not need to worry about getting any minion crit chance nodes uh, which saves a lot of well, not that many passive points, but uh, this is a lower budget. I believe you could do this on a higher budget and actually build up your crit chance. And I'm not even sure how this would look on a higher budget. I, I tend to focus on lower budget builds that uh, are accessible for more players. Now to talk about drawbacks, obviously the main drawback is that you only have one minion that does all the clearing and all the damage. And it's very obvious that that one minion is not very smart. <laughs> Sometimes for some reason it just stops. The animate garden tries to reach enemy that it cannot reach and it does nothing until it, it reaches that enemy but it cannot reach because it's blocked by something. So sometimes it's very annoying when it just does nothing. However this transfigures might that the animate garden is using is actually pretty nice. It does have pretty long reach and it can strike targets even behind it if um, if I am, I'm not sure how it chooses which targets to strike. But it strikes uh, pretty far away and the EOE is pretty good and with Impulse it does feel like it has pretty good clear. Another drawback is that you kind of have to remember to use destructive link. I am using level 1 destructive link to keep the mana cost as low as possible. A higher level destructive link only increases the buff effect just a tiny bit uh, more duration and it does have a bit more crit multiplier which I think is not that important unless you focus specifically on passive points to increase the link buff effect. So the mana cost may also be a problem and you have to remember to keep reusing destructive link every like uh, 8 seconds which isn't that big of a problem. You just hold the right click and it auto targets, it auto links to the unlinked targets. So it doesn't try to link to the link target again. So it's very easy, you just hold the button a bit and that's it. It's linked. I am also using intuitive link on a 6 link setup to automate desecrate offering and uh, punishment course. Uh, but that one drains mana very quickly so I just tap it once and then one second later quickly use the destructive link uh, to remove intuitive link because only one link can be applied to the target. And most things are actually automated. All you need to do is like convocate your minions and then signal prey to 
focus target and then just remember to use the uh, destructive link so it actually plays pretty well and and pretty smoothly i was kind of surprised that it just feels decent it doesn't feel clunky at least in my opinion my movement speed could actually be a bit higher and i'm sure that it could be solved i just reused the boost that i had from the dancing dervish and some of the items from the dancing dervish by the way dancing dervish build that i did also was able to clear tier 17 map but again you have to really roll the modifiers until you get something that you can do now this build like i said does not have much tankiness i am running determination for myself and then wrath for minions and i do have uh, defiance of destiny amulet and uh, doppelganger uh, body armor which i think carries me like these two items just carry my defenses I also do have minion taunt so if monsters get hit by minions we, we get taunted and they stay away from me for the most part and I do have three specters it would be so much easier to sustain higher level destructive link with just armed garden but you really want specters and for the specters I am using arena masters you kind of want also tanky specters because if you if you link the specters and one of them dies you also die so you want to make your specters tank as well so arena master is a tanky specter and you do not want this spectral leader whatever it's called because it summons srs and you would link to those srs and you would die so arena master provides a buff for the action speed then carnage chieftain from ashen fields in act 6 provides frenzy charges which actually do very often uh, stay at three charges and not not just two charges and for the last specter i am using pale seraphim which according to poe db provides a debuff for all damage taken and not just physical so arena master carnage chieftain and pale seraphim I'm not sure where you get uh, Arena Master and Pale Seraphim. Just go to just go to Global Six 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 and uh, ask for Arena Masters and uh, Pale Seraphim, and someone will invite you into party. Uh, now the gloves that I'm using, Hand of the um, Hand of the Fresia, are the new gloves which are for the Link kind of builds. And uh, there is a, currently a bug with that. I'm, I think it is a bug. If you use Generosity on an aura, normally you don't benefit from that aura. But if you generosity on a on an aura and use these gloves and you link to the some other target you still benefit from that aura but it is still boosted by the generosity so i think that's a bug and i did not want to use that that's why my determination is not linked to generosity but these gloves could also like i have to low roll uh, you also want as close as possible to 40 percent increase the effect of non-course aura premium skills I'm not sure how would this look on a guardian. I did not want to go guardian because I absolutely hate it is summoning Sentinel of Radiance every like 20 seconds. It's just too annoying for me. But guardian would probably probably have more damage because uh, the relics are like level 27, wrath, hatred, and uh, anger. But then I'm not sure how you would make your animate guardian tank enough because I am currently using Mask of the Stitch Demon. Like I said, did I say that? Mask of the Stitch Demon converts their energy shield into life regeneration. And because uh, Necromancer provides minions a lot of extra maximum energy shield, it gets converted into life regen and it just has massive life regen. So my animate garden has almost 10,000 life regen per second, but only like 27k life. So it can still get one shotted, but I mean, with almost 10k life regen per second, most things shouldn't really hurt animate garden. I'm gonna go over animate garden items that I'm using and quickly explain them. So Rakiata's dance is just amazing because you don't need to worry about applying exposure, you don't need elemental weakness, you actually even want enemies to have like increased resistances because then it's gonna be inverted and the animate garden is gonna be doing more damage. Uh, Mask of the Siege Demon is the most expensive item on animate guardian. I think I paid like 3 divines. Can be a lot more expensive at the start of the league impulse is broken hard just for the clear speed because remember it, it always has 100% crit chance while you are using destructive link so it will always shock and it will always kind of add a bit extra clear uh, soul ascension gloves i think they are not really mandatory for this build i think you could get away with maybe the new fortify gloves they would uh, provide a bit less attack speed but, but i think it would be more immediate uh, attack speed and a bit more tankiness or you could maybe go even with the unique gloves that uh, kind of spread shocks for the impulse to kind of chain explode even more and then the storm storm charger boots which i guess are kind of unusual they can roll a very high uh, movement speed up to 40 percent and also increase effect of lighting ailments so essentially it, it uh, helps animate garden shock for higher percentage and that shock to last longer 
So in Pathfinder building, I only entered 20% effect of shock, but I very often saw even 50% effect of shock even on tougher targets, uh, even on guardians. So it can definitely be higher, and uh, frenzy charges can be higher. And like I said, uh, this is not min max, so the damage would be higher. But and with like 250, I believe actually the maximum souls are 45 by default. But for the souls, it would have 200% increased attack speed. I think it rarely reaches that number because it, it takes over 20 seconds of non-stop hitting to reach that number and what target is going to survive for 20 seconds and allow non-stop attacking it but i think i'm trying to keep this kind of reasonable numbers without going all the maximum checkboxes and everything possible the Milton Fate, I just had it from before, I just check it in to get extra mana regen because this one provides mana regen per devotion, just make sure that it doesn't break any of the nodes. Intuitive Link, by the way, the spell cascade in here is only to keep at least some corpses left after uh, consuming them with the offering, because Necromancer gives an extra 10% like damage reduction and increased damage taken uh, for monsters and UE if you consume a corpse recently. For Panthers, pretty much I always go for uh, these two. Reduce effect of shock and anti-stun. Fully upgraded. I'm sure that this build can be improved in so many different ways and, and can be approached in different ways. But I was pretty happy in, in the end with this build and I was able to do tier 17. Not the first time this league, but um, yeah, the tier 17s can be like really crazy and uh, you really need to roll a modifiers that you can do. By the way, I only have one link wheel, these three. Uh, this is a bit of uh, cast speed and uh, whatever. Mainly you want link master, although you probably don't even need link master depending, but it's much easier to hold the button a bit, two pulses, and it links to all the four minutes. It links to two targets uh, at, at once. If you don't have this, you would need to wait for much longer to link to four targets and it would just not be pleasant. The jewels that I have also nothing crazy. Some of them even have cold damage instead of lighting. You definitely want lighting damage if you're running wrath, but the jewels, I just got what I managed to craft myself. The resistances, I think at some point was kind of a problematic thing, so I actually had to get two jewels with resistances and put it in the darkness and throne. That is gonna be it about this build. I still don't have uh, the next build plan and I'm not sure what. Kind of have ideas for the next minion build, but I don't really want to play a minion build fair time in a row or fourth time in a row. So maybe some of you have some interesting build ideas, leave them in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.